Hi, my name is Reverend Taro Kiyama, and these are Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor Season 4. In this season, we've been looking at the whole area of success. Are there people who are successful in their different spheres of life and yet holding firm to their faith? And so today, it's my extreme pleasure to introduce to you DJ Tabs. Yes. Number one, I am saved. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord as my personal savior. So I got saved, I got born again in 2009, mm -hmm. back when I was in high school. Now you know my age. <laughs> so um, the journey of um, just being born again has been, it has had its ups and downs. But at the end of the day, I just, every time I just tell myself that this is the place to be like I don't want to be anywhere else. And uh, apart from being uh, a DJ, okay, mm -hmm. I'm a female gospel DJ. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that. Allah, you know we've yeah. had people who start with, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, <laughs> and then I'm a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so DJ oh. is like your, your first love, the yeah, thing it's, it's, that you love to it's do. It's my first love. It's, it's the thing I did first. Mm -hmm. It's what I wanted to do ever since I was in high school. And oh, it's, wow. it's, it's, it, it's one of the things that amazes me in my life because me, I'm just not there. You know, false DJs are like, ooh, yeah, yeah DJ. Yeah. Hyped people. Hyped people. But me, I'm just like chilled. I'm an introvert. So yeah. what made you decide that you want to be a DJ? So, I mean, just excuse me, but mm -hmm. you know, I think because of the generation gap, uh, for us, we knew DJ, like so were high people, hey. who go, people who like to party and yeah, all those kind true, of things. True, true. And then first it was a very male, uh, dominated, dominated field, space, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But then now, and then there was no really Christian DJs, yeah, not really, yeah. you know. But then so. now to meet a female Christian DJ is so amazing <laughs> for me. It's also it's also amazing for me because I'm like, eh, hey, I don't know how I got here. But one thing I normally say it's by the grace of God, uh -huh. because um, when I was in high school, around form two, I wanted to be an artist. In fact, I even went to studio and recorded two songs. Mm -hmm. So Nilienda, Nikayumba. So you can sing. Uh, I cannot sing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I'm a DJ. Yeah. There's a reason I play the songs. At least, you, at least you love music even then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had that passion for music. So from two, from three, I recorded um, two songs. And I was in like a group. We were just the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to a studio. That time was when gospel was coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, it had not been fully embraced, but that is when now you are finding people like Kina Rafton were coming up, Kina Emoji, Emoji Yani were my favorite group, mm -hmm. um, Kina SK Blue, mm -hmm. and then DJs, Kulikona Kina DJ Mo, Kina DJ Sadik, and um, this and guy's Moz. Just, and mm -hmm. Moz, and uh, Kina Soxi, and Kina Celeb. That's the time these guys were coming up. Mm. Then there was a time they came to our school. Mm -hmm. Which school is this? If you don't remember. State House Girls. Ah, yeah, that's my that's old school. State. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is so neat. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so I went to State House Girls uh -huh. up at Ruet State. Um, when I was there, that's when I was like, um, we used to go for CU and all that in that key hall. You remember that yeah, I remember hall? the hall. Uh, yes. Then one day, I don't, I don't even remember who was DJing, by the way. Then after I left that CU, I was like, I have this conviction to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. And then what I used to do, I used to tell people like each and every day, each and every friend I meet, by then I took up a DJ. Then they would look at me like, hmm? Wait, wait, Sasa. You may could just me to a DJ. Eh, alafu, when we seem to a kelele, you know a DJ not a come to a hype nini nini. But I I I I stuck with that. Mm. From three from four, I stuck with that. Mm. Like, I want to be a DJ, I want to be a DJ, I want mm. to be a DJ. Mm. And that's why I normally say, the words you speak, they it is power. very true what the Bible says, that the words you speak about yourself, yeah. they have a lot of power. Because I believe those words are what eventually made me into a DJ. I used to have a scrapbook when I was in high school, Eloquemendiqua mm -hmm. DJ tabs. 
like out of nowhere, I just wrote that name on my desk. Vila tulikuwa tunandika nga na compass. I wrote DJ Tabs on my desk. DJ Tabs was here. Yeah, DJ Tabs was here. <laughs> and then on that scrapbook, um, it, that was the time I think um, Groove Awards ilikuwa zimeanza. So, yeah, I wrote that I also want to win a Groove Award in 2012. Oh, wow. So, um, I told my mom, still in high school, uh, uh, like a month or two to KCSE, I told my mom I want to be a DJ. And she was like, mm, okay, so where is Oma too? <laughs> and then, we, we, we shall see. So, I did my KCSE and I finished. So, in December, I mm. went to told my mom, I told you I want to be a DJ. Here I am. I have a DJ school that I want to go to. It is this and this amount. So I in January. That is where the story began. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so now the next step was going to tell my dad, you know. So she sent you to tell your daddy stuff. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I yeah, my mom she knew. Yeah, she knew if she goes. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I went to my dad. I'm like. I want to be a DJ. Then my dad was like, huh? You know, and I, of course it was a no. Oh, what do you mean? Being a DJ. I can tell you the words of my dad. My dad told me, wale watu ninaonanga na marasta. Hao ndio watu unataka kukua? Habana. You know, that is what DJing was associated with. You know, you have to have a... Some like, like uh, you, your hair has to to be uh, to you need dreadlocks or something. You you know, eh? Hey, and that is what like my dad was like. That is what a DJ uh, being a DJ is. Me, I was like me. I knew what being a DJ is. It was just about the skill and not all these other things. So my dad was like, um, I want to be a DJ. Forget it. Because I, I can just imagine you sleep with my daughter. Are you the first born? I'm the first born. I'm the only girl. Eh? I got like, uh, you know, uh, the uh, first born's parents normally project their dreams on the first, first, first born. Yeah. So I think my dad used to be like, Sasa, we are Takosa Kwenda Shule and the DJ school. What, what is that? I don't know, Baba Nani. Baba, you are DJ. You are a DJ. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't sound good. Like, Baba, you are a doctor. When you are a advocate. I'm a lawyer, you know. Uh, so, um, now, January is You know, after we are done with KCC, January is here. And I'm still telling my parents, me, I want to do DJ. And they were like, mm -mm. Then I went to my dad, uh, my mom, I was like, Mom, I told you when I was in high school that I wanted to be a DJ and you told me, Nisawa, you just do your exam. And here I have done my exam, I have fulfilled my part. Why don't you do yours? Then my mom was like, your dad said no, so it's a no. <laughs> and I felt so bad, Yani. I was so discouraged because this is something I had wanted for the past two years. From three, from four, I had always wanted to be a DJ. And then my dream suddenly has just been shattered. And now let me ask you, I'm, 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 I'm asking for a parent. <clears throat> what were you going to do after, you know, I, I, I'm just sitting here thinking if you were my daughter and you came and told me you want to be a DJ. And I know it's worked. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, against, you know, DJing as a career. But what did you project yourself as doing? I mean, here you are, you're a Christian, so... And I think your parents were afraid, you know, you'd go play for clubs, alafu pote. You know, so what were you projecting to do? I mean, what's the career projection for a DJ? Um, Asking for to, a friend. To be honest, I had no career projection. I just had passion for it. You know, there are things that um, you have passion to do something, maybe like music, but you, it's, it's, it's just that that thing, why not? It, it brings such a desire or conviction in you and makes you so happy that you just want to do it. And uh, for me, that was DJing because um, I, 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 it's not like I wanted to be on TV. I was like, hey, me, I'm too shy to be on TV. Uh, it's not like I wanted to be on radio or anything. I just had passion for that skill. 
I just really wanted to be a DJ, you know, just to learn how to DJ. That was my fulfillment. Ata ata nikakuwa naifanya tu kwa nyumba, that was my fulfillment. But I normally say like it was not mimi nilikuwa naona the outside, but God had something deeper yeah. for me. So Musa mother that conviction that was in me, it was not from me. It was from God. It was from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God knew what he wanted to do with me as a DJ. So here in Yanakwambia like one day I was just like telling my friends I want to be a DJ, I want to be a DJ. I normally say it didn't come from me. It came straight from God. That was his will for me and that's why I am here today. Mm. Mm. So how did you eventually did you ever eventually go to DJ school? Oh, yeah. So I, we were at January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. January came and my dad and my mom were like, no, you cannot be a DJ. So what you will do is um, you will go to accounting school and then from there you can know about your, about your life. But I told them, I don't want to be an accountant. And I am just from doing a major exam and now you're telling me to go to school. There's a reason people are given one or two years off before going to campus or, or college, you know, so that you can figure out your life. And then me, I'm coming here with something that I'm telling you I really want to do, and then you're telling me to do something else. Well, because um, eventually children obey your parents. I did, I went to accounting school. Mm -hmm. But that, that is not where my passion was. So after four months, I just went back to them and told them, I can't continue. I cannot. But before that, there's one thing I did. I went to DJ school, uh, system unit. Uh, that was led by DJ Mo. And I, I went, I looked for it. I went there. I took myself there and I asked them, how much is a DJ course? They told me it's 30,000. Kumuke mini metoka from four juzi. Where am I going to get 30,000 from? So what, what, what DJ Mo told me is, and I remember very clearly, if you, you can pay 15,000 deposit, then if you're good enough, we can sponsor you the, the 15,000. So that was my plan. Look for 15,000, and then the other 15,000, I am going to make sure that I'll be the best of the best until I don't have to pay the other 15,000. This is so, Mo Linet's husband. Yes, that is, this is G, DJ Mo, the, the one and only DJ Mo. So um, I went uh, January, I was like, okay, so my parents want, to, want me to go to accounting school. I'm telling them I don't want to go to accounting school. But you know what? I will make this accounting school count. Mm. So what will I do? I will save all my monies, everything that I've been given, until I get to 15,000. And that is exactly what I did. So, ningeshukia katikati ya njia ndio nitembe, just to save half of my fare. Ndio niende DJ school. And I used to put them somewhere under the mattress, you know. So, ile siku zilifika 15,000. Kwa chena na kaunti. Kambia my parents, mimi, kusema ukweli, this is not what I wanted to do with my life. This is what I want to do. No, this is DJing. DJing is what I want to do with my life. And uh, Musama, at the end of the day, the journey that uh, God anataka kukupitisha itakuwa na ups and downs. There'll be highs and there'll be lows. It may not be straightforward. You know, some, most of the times you want a straight journey. And yet things are A, B, C, D. But there are times things are A, they take a detour, they go to D, then take another one, come back to B, and nini, nini, nini. So for me, those four months were just part of that detour because God wanted to teach me something. Because at the end of the day, guess what? I went back to my parents one night and really begged, really, really begged. I don't know out of nowhere. Muslim too, it's just God. You know, God can really change someone's heart. You know, he changed Pharaoh's heart when it was so hardened. So despite the fact that my parents were like, no, you cannot do this, it changed. And my dad was like, okay, you know what? Actually, just go and do that DJing. And in fact, I will even pay your entire, your entire fee for that DJ school. And in fact, you go even do something extra 
that you you want to do. So at the same time, I wanted to do a language, so I went and did French for Alliance Francais. Francais. So I used to to move from Alliance to Anniversary Towers. I come from French class, go to DJ school. And man, life was so good back then. Life was so good. And I just really thank God because that was his journey for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had, did you ever get a scholarship? Um, okay, I, did, I didn't get the scholarship because when my parents gave me the money, I just went with all of it. <laughs> Can't think of uka, it. Maybe, uka, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I was too excited. Uka, a plan. Hey, I was too excited. I was like, yeah, you went to my Take it, take it. And that is, yeah, I just went with the whole amount. Yeah. So how long did it take you to uh, complete it took the course? Me, the course was two months, but um, in two months, you're, you're not able to learn like everything. Yeah. So uh, what normally happens is if you're good, you get an internship. Yeah. That is exactly what I got. So maybe I didn't get the 15,000 uh, scholarship, yeah. but what I got was an internship with at system, yes with them with system okay. unit and that is how my DJing and DJ journey began and journey into the media began. So what what was like your first gig? Tell us about your first gig. Uh, it was this back to school gigs. So um, there's uh, there's someone from uh, the Baptist Church in Kawa West who came to uh, the class in system unit, the, the school in system unit and then akambi wa mimi ni wakawa west and then he was like mm what -hmm. a chance ucheze kwa back to school yenye naku inakuja that is how i got my first gig and uh, luckily for me in, in that first gig at least that alini alini pea nilifurahi kupewa ka kitu yani you know this is the first money you have ever earned, earned for yourself yeah eh, you're like eh kumbe nilikuwa nifanye hii kitu na hata ilikuwa niletee pesa you know it was not much it was just uh, something for for lunch but the fact that um, I got this for myself out of something I'm so passionate about. I was so happy about that. Um, yeah. Okay. Then you began and you began to grow. You began being sought after. Yeah. Tell us about that journey from that small back to school gig all the way to, to who you are today. Yeah. So um, I think, uh, so I, I was in system unit. I was an, a DJ there. You know, after doing the internship, I officially became a system unit DJ. So we used to have so many um, gigs. Uh, now this time I was in campus because now by by then I had transitioned into into campus. So uh, I, I normally say at a, the the accounting uh, school that I went to, that is where I started doing law. There was a unit called law, and that is how I just fell in love with law. And that is what I ended up doing in, in campus. So at the end of the day, it was not a waste. It was all part of God's journey for me. Yeah. So you, you knew that as much as you wanted to do this, what, what made you not study, like go and study music or study? Why law? I mean, they look so... Mm, they look so, so different. Um, because at, at, the, at the end of the day, I also feel like... Um, you know the way people normally say you're you're a DJ yet you're a quiet person in Nini. Um, my my personality and my DJing are just they are not the the same. You know you know DJing actually requires people who are who are hyped and all that. But uh, once you have passion for something, you get to learn the art of being that thing. You know, so at the end of the day, in as much as um, I was also shy of being in TV and radio, I learned the art of being on TV and being on radio. I learned the art of DJing in front of crowds because I used to be so shy. I was like, I need to know I want to allow what I need to You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like all those eyes on me. What will I do? You know, I'll, I'll, I can just disappear at Chinia Mesa or something, or can the ground just swallow me? Yeah, so at the end of the day, um, they, are, they are quite different, yeah. but I, both, I love to do them both. There's, there's just um, a passion that I have for both of them. Because one is very hype and the other one is very mm. proper. Yeah. 
very very proper mm. so do you practice as a lawyer yeah i do you do <coughs> and yeah. have you ever has there ever been conflict like somebody meets mm. in the lake ala to kone ko bash like I'm so yeah. like I am I really yeah. going to give you this job to represent me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's been some there's, of the conflict. There's always been conflict. Um one because they are both so demanding. Yeah. Yeah, so this one demands your attention and this one also demands your attention. So for that for me all my life that has been something I've been really struggling with and um Mm, just to strike that balance nitafanyaje hii nitafanyaje hii because like when 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 i was employed i used to go to work even on saturday and then gigs ni za sato as, as, as a lawyer, a lawyer. Mm-hmm. yeah when i was employed as a lawyer you know so you go to school, law school you do pupillage mm-hmm. that is internship and then you start working and you know um this pupillage you're doing is work you know you you're actually working so that means you're under a person who's telling you you have to come to my office from Monday to Saturday from 8 until this time so you'd find i have hey tabs niko na gig thursday afternoon sikuje niko job hey tabs zato niko na gig sikuje niko job so there was always that that conflict and it was um, it, it, it was always there yeah and um But right now I really thank God because he has really helped me uh to strike a balance between the two. It may not be perfect. The journey may not be perfect because it still has its ups and downs. There's still that conflict everywhere. But so far I can say I have really come from a long way. From a really really long way. And you got to work for media houses, right? What are some of the media houses that you worked for? So the first media house I worked for, the first um uh gig i did for media was um radio yes so i started with radio um because i was under dj mo he was like um tabs can you do tv i'm like uh uh i can't me miss this is mama mbele a camera kin i'll be so shy nini nini so he told me you know what let us start with radio so he used to have a gig on truth fm now the interesting thing is This show that I got onto the fam is what I used to listen to when I was in high school. Wow. So, yani let I commit to mama you're on holiday at home. I used to have a small car radio. You know back in the day, kulikuwa na utu radio tulikuwa na to aerial. And I used to have my own special in my room. Yenye ni meset hapo kwa study desk and I and on friday nights i would turn on to truth fm and listen to that show it was called replay show funny enough when i got now to the show now it became replay reloaded because now it had after a couple of it was now a few years later and now it had revamped now it was replay reloaded and that was the first uh, gig i got and i was so happy about it because i mean nilikuwa na just Nilikuwa nasikiza mara hiyo sasa sasa hizi mimi ndio ndio ile msi. Mimi niko the the other side. Um and then TV TV um the first ah the first gig I got for TV was a show that used to air on two TV stations actually. It used to air on KTN and QTV. So I used to be on two TV stations at the same time. Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. And then from there Uh, I got What is the name of the show? It was called um it was uh, this this um like Skiza tunes so it was yeah yeah bo- those bonyeza shows uh you just bonyeza you, you play music um and then you you told you bonyeza this this and this to get that song as your ringtone nini nini yeah so I used to do that show um and then from there I went to QFM Yeah so from QTV I got QFM so I used to do radio uh there was a time I used to do QFM with Rashid Abdallah and then uh, I used to do the 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 Monday morning show and was this a christian show or was this just a normal secular show no it was just a normal this normal morning shows but for monday it was specifically gospel because i am a gospel dj i always every time even someone who calls me for a gig that's the first thing i tell you Remember you're calling me because I'm a 
I'm a gospel DJ, so don't expect me to play anything else except Christian music. So I used to have also the Sunday show on QFM with Selika Dot. And um, then in the course of that, I also uh, used to do crossover. So when Mo is not around, or maybe it's uh, Women's Day, or maybe it's a special edition, or maybe we just do the show with Mo. So I used to do crossover. And that was like now my major, my first major, major gig on TV. Yeah, and then um, uh, in the course of doing crossover, because I, I was not permanently in crossover, I was just like a guest DJ, I got now my own personal show on Ebru TV. It was called Blessica. And uh, wow, I used, I, I used to love that show because now that, that one I used to feel like I own this show because I am the DJ, I am the one who controls, you know, my music, uh, if it's uh, my ideas, I can be able to channel my ideas and all that. So I did Ebru TV uh, and now I've done TV 47. Yeah. And uh, I've, uh, but I, I, I have traveled to all media stations, by the way. I have done all, uh, I have done uh, shows on Citizen, I have done shows on KTN, I have done shows on K24, and uh, now I'm currently on KBC. So, and, uh, and you did all these shows, I mean you've worked for the media stations who are still maintaining your job yeah. as a practicing advocate. Yes, yes. Wow. Um, but there was a time when, like I've said, Kulikwatuna, uh, um, a lot of issues with balancing the both yeah. of them. Yeah. And that was ex uh, that started when I went to law school, Kenya School of Law, yeah. not campus. Now the Kenya School of Law, because the Kenya School of Law is so demanding. Yes, and it's yeah. only like six months, is it? Six mm, months per it's year. It's a year. It's a year, but now you have like another year of pupilage internship, which you must do. If you do not do it, you'll not you'll not be admitted to the bar. So that was like two years, and then after those two years, you know, you still want to perfect your art. So you, you're still working and working. So I had like a whole five-year sabbatical without doing DJing. It reached a point where I was so discouraged. I was like, guy, me what I need to DJ. Because I want to do it, but at the same time, I want to be a lawyer, and these things are just conflicting. And they're bringing me so much, um, you know, stress, and just, I'm, I'm like, guy, what do I do? You know, but uh, at the end of the day, Yanni, God just came through for me because He, you know, He has planned our lives even before we were formed in our mother's homes. He knows, you know, what you're going to do, what you're going to be. So at the end of the day, God knew what I was going to be and He has helped strike that balance. So, so what did, mm. how did you eventually then, because five years is a long time. Five years is a long time. People start forgetting that there was somebody. And I think during your time is also the, that's the time also, I think Piera was coming up, though I know she plays both secular and I don't yeah. know if she plays in Christian. Yeah, yeah. Piera has been there for a while.
the first female DJ to get a yeah. Groove Award, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So oh, in wow. 2015, I got a Groove Award. That one was also um, like the Talent of the Year Award. It was an award they introduced for that year. For the talents that they're seeing are really coming up well in the industry. So they, they, they really wanted to push, you know, upcoming talent in the industry. You know, there was already the established guys. And then there were those who are coming up and they really wanted to push those ones. So um, I, got, I got that award. We were 10 of us in that category and I was the only lady. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. And do you think you've like helped open the door for female DJs and or even for female DJs first to be offered jobs or even to be taken seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because um, it, we, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not like we are, we are there yet. Uh, we still have a long way to go. But uh, I have seen so many female DJs coming up and uh, most of them, you know, they'll, they'll tell you, Tabs, I used to watch you when I was in high school, Ama when I was in school, Ama when I used to come for gigs, this gigs, the system unit, we used to have a, a gig, um, it was called, uh, it was called what? Ilikuwa Hapatao, every Sunday afternoon. Uh, we used to have a gig where people, guys, young people just come and enjoy gospel music. You know, mna cheza ma DJ, hype people, nini nini, there's reggae, there's hip hop, you play all types of gospel music. And people used to tell me, Yanni Tabza used to come for that event and I used to see you, nini nini. And I got inspired to be a DJ. And some are like, I see you on TV. Others are like, my daughter sees you on TV and she wants to be a DJ now and all that. So I may not know each and every person, but for sure, I get those testimonies. I get them on my DM. I, I get them from people who are already there, some female DJs who are already there. So for sure, I can say that um, we, I, I have seen some people grow because of what they have seen me do. Yeah. OK. And let me ask you, in this journey, what have been some of the, because I know it's not easy. I've seen so many DJs start off well. You know, I mean, this whole creative space, whether it's a DJ or it's a musician or it's an actor, I mean, most of them start off in the faith, but along the way, opportunities come. People want you to play for uh, Tesca Project Fame or they want you to play for an upcoming club. And the money is good money. Yeah. And some of them, you know, start taking jobs and some of them are able to navigate their faith through that, but others are unable to navigate the faith. Yeah. And before you know it, they've fallen off. So what have been like the, um, have you had such similar moments and how have you been able to navigate them? And what are some that maybe you haven't navigated so well in retrospect, you know, just share with us along those lines. Yeah, um, those things are always there because uh, at the end of the day, you'll not be called only for Christian events. You'll be called even for other events. You'll be called for co corporate events. And uh, maybe someone does not know you're a gospel DJ. Okay, the people who called you know you're a gospel DJ. So they called you to play gospel music. But the guys who are listening to the music, maybe they do it. So they'll start telling you, DJ, so you just say, you know, a secular song, nini. And you, at the back of your mind, you're just like, uh, call like two sa sa sour. When the other DJ comes, they will, they will play. Then there was this time I had a gig. Um, I was, uh, it was a very big, for a very big company, very big corporate company size. And um, they called me to play. The person who called me knew very well I'm a gospel DJ. And so me, I went and chose for campus guys. The gig was for, uh, for uh, so many campus students from, uh, from that area. It was in Kisumu. So all the campuses from Kisumu Zika kuja kukusanyika in that one place, in that one gig. Kuaribu, kuaribu. So um, I, I don't know what, 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 what the communication was there, because um, it's like, I, 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 it, came, it reached a point where I was now the only DJ. I DJed for like six hours, I think. And I'm just playing gospel music for a whole six hours. So suddenly, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a secular event. 
So guys are drinking and all that. Yes, they are enjoying your gospel music, but when I enjoy kuna dawa lakini nijua ameshikilia dawa ya. Yeah. So hey, DJ kuna dawa, dawa ni you know and all that. Then suddenly I was like, "Hi, this environment that I am in does not sit so so well with me." And uh, I just had to tell um my you know the the agent who had brought me that uh, now kulingana na mahali imefika it is time for someone else to just to just take over because uh, uh, you know guys I, I guys are enjoying your music yes but uh, the atmosphere has suddenly changed it's not yeah. yeah it's not bringing about the atmosphere that you were desirous exactly. oh wow. wow so what did you do did they bring somebody else? Yeah, they had to. And did they that mean loss because of because for because you? no no, you know the contract states clearly, you know that you're coming, you're a gospel DJ, and you're coming to play gospel music. You know, even in your contracts, you ha you have to to state specifically what you have come to do, and uh, so the agent knew very well what I had come to do. He knows me, he knows I am a gospel DJ, and he was very understanding. So I did not lose any revenue, I did, I did come, and I did do my job. Is it helpful for you that you have a fallback plan? Because I think some people feel like, you know, I, this is it for me, this is my, you know, bread and butter. So I cannot afford to be choosy or would you still make the same decision even if you didn't have, you couldn't fall back on being an attorney? Mm. Um, I would still make the same decision uh, because, like I said, you 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 don't expect like your life to be just easy. Yes, we want our lives to be easy. We want everything to just go like A B C D till Z. But uh, we have to recognize the fact that we will have challenges along the way. So even if you go back and decide, I won't do this, maybe I'll, I'll be just a DJ instead, or I'll just be a lawyer instead. Even that which you want, you're saying, I would have been just a lawyer instead, it will have had its own challenges. So for me, I wouldn't change anything. I will just still take the same path. So do you work for yourself now in terms of being an attorney, or are you the firm? I do work for myself. I work for my own firm. Okay, so at least yeah. you have better control of your time. Yes, yes, and that's the reason why I just got out of employment and got into my own self-employed. Uh, What's the name of this one? It's called Tabitha Gidere and Co-Advocates. Yes, so... Um, it's, it's, it's because of that, because I, I want to be a DJ. I also want to, to um, improve on this craft and just continue uh, doing it. Why? Because there's a vision I have for it. So it's, it's like your mission field. Yeah, and there's a vision that I have for it. And the vision is, I want to change someone else's life out there. Mm. It was not the thing I wanted from the word go when I was thinking about being a DJ. But that is what God had purposed. And when I got into that space and found that I could actually change someone's life because of being a DJ. How? You know, like, um, someone is like, I, I didn't know that um, as, a, as a lady, I could actually do DJing or I could follow my passion and follow uh, my art of music mm. and all that. And uh, at the same time, Pia, there are people when you're on TV, they're like, um, please share your testimony so that my parents can hear about it. And then you share, parents are like, hey, if she did it, then even my daughter can, do it. can also do it. So then it, it also kind of puts you out there so then you can let your light shine in a, in a bigger space, particularly to young people. But has it ever cost you a job as an attorney? What's been the cost, I think? What's been the cost? The cost of being a DJ. Yeah. Or what's been like some of the, you know, have you ever found yourself in a space where it's, it's cost you something, whether it's money or reputation or a job on this other end? What I can say, yeah, it has really cost me. Um, you know, like, like I was saying, uh, doing these two things at the same time that are so demanding, sometimes one suffers 
uh, beyond like one suffers and then the other one is like this and then next time maybe this one is like this and this one is like this so at times i have found my uh, legal side suffering because of being a dj you know because maybe i've put too much effort or too much time on this and then this other one ends up uh you know uh not not uh, succeeding maybe as much as this one and even vice versa like i said i took a five year sabbatical to study law and of course my djing suffered at that time i lost so many gigs and uh, i lost so many fans um and you, you know people were looking for you then suddenly they are not yeah you know it's like you have to start all yeah, over again yeah yeah and actually when i came back that was exactly what i was doing and that is exactly what i feel like i'm doing currently i am starting all over again and um it has been quite a journey but at the end of it all i just say like i can't i I wouldn't change a thing between the two. I would still go through the same exact journey because if I didn't go through that journey, then I would still not be where I am today. Yeah, yeah, that that journey of just, um, I it, like, you know, that time when I was a DJ, you know, I was so young, and when, when, you're, when you're young, you don't even know how to, to like, take care of your finances, you know, suddenly, you're earning so much money you don't even know what to do with it okay so like uh, sometimes i normally sit down right now and i'm like hey what happened to that to that money you know um but if i am if if you're given the same amount of money right now you definitely have the maturity and the wisdom to use it better so now i normally find like the way I used that money that time was not good, but right now the way I'm using that money right now is out of wisdom, out of knowledge, and out of understanding that this is how I should lead my life. Mm. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. Well. Mm. And Tabs, are you seeing somebody? Are you married? <laughs> Tell us about your personal life. Yeah. I'm sure there's someone watching. They're like, yeah. wait, wait, she's so cute. Yeah. So let's just put them at rest. Oh, okay. Pema, Pema, Pema. Pema, Pema, Pema. Hey. The DJ Tabs is married. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell us yeah. about your family. So I got married on 2nd November 2019. Oh. Yeah, that was immediately before COVID. It was just like a few months before COVID. Um, we met in church. We go to church together. Where do you go to church? Isika is St. Elizabeth Kahawa West. Oh. In fact, I'm the chair lady of the youth there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, we met there. Mm, uh -huh. it, was, it was not at Zileza, like, you know, me, me I, I was so focused on my life. Eh? I was focused on my life. I'm like, mm -mm. Mimi, he, he said their relationship, what's it called? Kwanza, Mimi, what's it called? Nani? I'm thinking you have a full time job as a DJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're a law student, and then here, Kwanza Law School is madness. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to balance those two already. You're involved in church. So, so tell me your boyfriend. Oh, yeah, this guy must be long suffering. Tell me your boyfriend, Sina. You know, apana, akuna yota imakuna, my friend, weka uko, you know. Um, but um, no, we, so we just remained as friends, 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 friends. And then it figured a, a point in my life where I was like, um, now it's time to open that. You know, open up that 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 door exactly. So um, and then him, that is when now he like started opening up that door to you know, like you know, mtu akikujia and then you shut that door on their face. They're like, okay, ata wewe kauko, eh? And then um, it was just like divine intervention. Uyu ana fungua yake na uyu ana fungua yake, and um, got married. And yeah, so we still in marriage, still strong, still continuing. Uh, marriage pina kwangana ups and downs zake. Uh, I, I can't, hadi wala, I can't believe that I can actually sit in a forum and discuss about marriage. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I, but I'm just still that single lady. <laughs> but I can actually sit in a forum, now I say to about marriage, you know. Uh, but it's a good thing. What does your husband do? 
Is he also in this creative space? No, no. Um, he's done. He's he's also like me because he studied engineering, but he has a passion for business. So he does business. He does his passion. So he has his own company, and that is what he does: business. Wow. Yeah, so he's like me, even him is like, I did aeronautical engineering, you know, I studied this, but this is what I have to do. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So we are also, we, we are both alike in, in that way. Which is good because then you're able to encourage each other. Because I am a firm believer that your passion will open doors for you. That sometimes it's better to follow your passion and it has a way, a way of making it pay for you for you yeah. eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, passion is something you'll not give up on. Why? Yeah. Because you love doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's something. And it becomes easy. You have the grace yeah, for it. Yeah, you have the grace for it. You have the motivation for it. You know, you just keep going and keep going and keep going. When things are good, you keep going. When things are bad, you keep going. So, Sam, let me ask you. Sometimes as a DJ, do you have late night uh, gigs and how does that play out, like being a married woman? Yeah, I do have late night gigs. Um, I, one, one thing is um, he has always been like my number one um, motivation fan. And he pushes me to, to like that time I, I had that sabbatical, he was really pushing me. He's like, you know, Bado, you know, I used to sit kila time because they are like, why well, I miss DJing, I miss DJing. I miss DJing. So, yeah, yeah, you need encourage a lot. So even if it's gigs, he's like, you go do them, you know. That is what you love. Go, end of fanye. Eh? If come a gigi kombali, go, end up, end of fanye. So it's not really at something that brings it's conflict in our home. No, no it's not. Oh, wow. Yeah. How are your parents with it now? Oh, my parents, eh? My parents now are like, eh, kumbe, iki to inge kupeleka hadi kwa TV. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> so uh, they're also like my biggest fans, I see. Uh, and they they are they are so happy for me, and they're so happy that um, I followed my passion. You know, yeah. I always I always hear my mom telling her friends that that you know one thing and one thing that makes them so proud is that I'm a gospel DJ. So you know when she's telling her friends, she's like she does Christian music, she plays for God. You know that makes her really proud. So looking back at your journey from the time you got saved and the feeling of God and first and foremost I like the fact that you know you are not this extra extrovert who's very you know up there and loud and what but God still had space for you and in this very it's like people had almost put you in a box you had to be a certain kind of person to make it in this career a certain kind of gender a certain yeah. kind of person and playing specific kind of music and it's like you have just blown away all those boundaries. You're a woman, you're not an extrovert, you have stuck to the gospel scene and you've still made money and a name out of it, you know, and then you took this big uh, sabbatical and you're back, you know. Now looking back at that long journey to that little girl in Form 3 who was dreaming, what would you tell her? Um, number one is, like I said, the words that you speak about yourself, the words of the tongue are so powerful. I will tell her to keep speaking those words each and every day. I wish I even spoke more, you know, like, uh, like, like I, I wish I even spoke a little bit more about, about me and what I want. But the fact that I used to, I used to just say, this is what I want to do. And I used to write it down. I would encourage anyone who's just young and looking for something to do. If you have a conviction to do something, please write your dreams down. Do not get discouraged. Keep moving, you know, and don't expect the road to always be smooth. Don't expect it to come like this. Sometimes the road may just have a lot of meandering and all that, but at the end of the day, Whatever you have passion for, whatever you love doing, stick to it. Sometimes we are told, how is it a dancer? Dancing haina pesa. You know. But at the end of the day, you don't know where God will take you. You do not know your future. You do not know tomorrow. You know now. So now you know you love how to dance, you love art, you love music, uh, you love playing the guitar, you love being a DJ. Do that right now then God will do the rest for you. Yeah. 
the, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you in the presence of kings. So I think our responsibility is to work that gift, you know, to sharpen it, to put in the work at developing this gift. And I like on, on Sunday we had a speaker in church and we're saying, you know, that each one of us gets a gift and you cannot determine the gift you will get, the quality of the gift, the quantity of the gift, and you can't even determine the amount of time that you will have to work this gift. But you can determine the, the, the you can you can work on your skill ability. Yeah. You know? You can, you yeah. Can work you work on your skill ability. You definitely so that you can make it fruitful. Because at the end of the day, uh, God gives you something and it's up to you to work on that something. Yeah. You know, it you can't ask for food and then you don't go to work. You know, you can't pray. God needs a pechakula. Alafu ukotu kwa nyumba. You're not going to work. You have to go work so that God can use that work to bring you that, that food. So in the same way, God has given you something to do. And I know most of us tuna kwangazilas are like, mimi ata sijui talent yangu, mimi ata sijui skill yangu. That little voice in your head that you, ama that little thing that unawananga, mimi napenda tu eh, kudekorate kwe kama uwa kama hizi. You know, Eh? That can turn into something like interior designing. But maybe that is what God has has purposed for you. So wo usiseme hiyo ni kitu ndogo. Useme mimi napenda tu ku put things together. I useme tu ah me I just like being organized and that's it. Maybe you can be a wedding planner. Yeah. You can be an event organizer. You know, that thing you love doing, see what you can you can work how you can work with it. I'm mm. laughing because I'm thinking, mimi nilikuwa nimependa kupiga makelele, si mimi nao, si mimi nao. I became a pastor and I yeah. interview people. Exactly. So, eh, uh, mwingine labda they can be even a hype, a hype man or a hype yeah. lady. Eh, yeah. yeah. ama you can be an MC in events and in weddings and all that. Mm, mm. So that thing that you ama yenye unaonanga it is in you, ama it is your character, ama it's something that you like doing but you think you can't uh, it's not a talent. No, there's something you can actually do with it. With what you know now, what do you wish you knew then? That could have been a bit more helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, one of the things that um, was very helpful to me was that I had a mentor. So the reason why I got back to DJing and decided I will not let this slide is because I want to be that to someone else. Mm. And um, I, I don't think Ningefika Mahali Nilikua, or rather Mahali Niko, without someone holding my hand, without like DJ Mo. DJ Mo has played a really integral part. Yeah, he held my hand. But he, he did extra. He held my hand, I can like a radio, I can like a TV, I can like a gigs. And that way I was able to open up. I was able to stand in front of a crowd. I was able to DJ. Right now you can give me a microphone and I will play music and I will hype the crowd. I'm a, I can stand in front of TV, in front of a camera like this and talk to people. You know, if it didn't if he didn't do that, then probably will not be here. So in the same way. I want to be that to someone else. I don't know to who, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself out there. And that is exactly what I'm doing. So that God can use me to be that to someone else. Many people lack that. In fact, I was telling someone the other day, they, I really wanted to be an intellectual property lawyer, but I never got someone to hold my hand and lead me in that journey. So right now, I am not an IP lawyer. I do other yet areas yet. I do other areas of law because um, I try to, you know, it, it's not a common area of law in, in this country. And sometimes you just need someone to, to hold your hand and just guide you through it and just show you, you know, uh, this, is, this is how the industry is and all that. So in the same way, I just want to be that to someone. Oh, wow. And, and my prayer for you, Tabs, is that God gives you that opportunity that you'll be the one who lead us in the front. Because there's there are always those front runners, you know, those you could be our front runner in the IP space, you don't know. And so I pray, don't, don't shut that door either. Don't shut that door either. 
So we all have a verse or a song for the season, yeah? And what's been your verse? Or when you look back this whole journey till where you are now, what's the one verse that you could say sums this up for me? There was this time uh, when I was in law school, um, when I was doing this, this, this uh, something called oral exam in law school. This is the oral exam that is done mid-year around August. And then there's the written exam that is done towards the end of the year. So when I got, the oral exam is where you just go in front of a panel of your lecturers. They ask you questions, you know, and uh, they just ask you something and then you answer. So when I got into that exam room, I don't know what happened. I just panicked, really panicked. And when I got out, I was so mad at God. I was so mad because I was like, why did you bring me here? And then you, you, have, you have put me in front of crowds of thousands of people. Like the previous year, I just come from a competition called, uh, it was called Groove What? Uh, it was Groove DJs. It was called uh, Gifted DJs, yes. Where um, we, were, we were just competing. Um, it was Groove, the Groove Awards. And then they had called DJs in a gospel field to do a competition. And I was the only lady in like three hundreds of, of DJs. We were two ladies and then at the end of the day, I was the only lady standing, you know. And at the, uh, that night, the, the finals, Zilekua group party. In front of a crowd of thousands of people. So I was telling God, last year, you put me in a crowd of thousands of people and I was able to do it. And now just a panel of four people, I panicked. Why? Why did you give me confidence for that and didn't give me confidence for this? And I was so, so mad. But one thing, um, there's one verse that, that I, I went through because I was, I, I was so mad at God. I was like, I was like, I was like, so you know what, let me take my Bible. So I took my Bible and I came to um, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk. Uh, chapter, I think chapter three. I, 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 there are two verses I love in Habakkuk. Um, nasema that do not look at the former things. Why? Because God is doing a new thing. And the new thing is so big that you will not even, even believe, even if you are told. And I sat, I was like, okay, God, and at the end of the day, this, this oral exam is going to determine my final exam. But you know what? When the final exam came, I passed. I passed. So God was telling me that do not let these things that happen, maybe the things that went wrong in your past, define your present and your future. And uh, most of us, we, we have a past, all of us we have a past. And the past may be good and others, it may just be ugly. And sometimes we let our ugly define our present and our future. It's just the same way that people blame God, but we tend to forget that there's so many good things that God has done for us. We just want to look at the bad and we stick with the bad. But God is telling us the things that happened in the past that were ugly, forget them. It is not easy, but put them to rest, put them to bed. Why? Because the things that are happening in the future or in the present are greater than that which happened in the past. In the past. And sometimes you can be so caught up in your past that you're not even seeing the beauty of the now. You're not being able to see the opportunities or the things that the Lord has laid ahead of you. And sometimes it could even be good things. Sometimes our past successes stand in the way of us going and walking into this new reality that the Lord is opening up for us. Yeah, yeah. and so at the end of the day, um, they'll be good and they'll be bad. But let us always fix our eyes on God. Let us always fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us always pray. Musema, 
hata zile maombi nilikuwa ninaomba kitambo wakati mwingine saa hizi i feel una feel nika you cannot pray but hizo maombi uliomba zinaendelea kukushikili kukushikilia so pray continually pray always and whenever you feel like um like things are not going well just keep on hanging to god i know some sometimes the things of god are so tough they are so hard you want to let go you are like i god why did you put me in such a position you say you love me you you planned my life why didn't you just plan good things no why did you plan all this negativity in my life why did all this have to happen but at the end of the day please let us fix our eyes on god let us not let go of god because he's still the one who is going to give us grace to be able to go through these tough times yeah so let's fix our eyes on jesus yeah continue fixing your eyes on god and you've played many 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 songs but what's your favorite song ah oh. You know actually <laughs> you just asked me uh, my husband was asking me the same thing yesterday he was like now because you normally go on tv every saturday which is that one song that you always love play remember that one song that really i am like i do not have one I, but what i do love is local music in fact in my show and even since i began djing 99. 9% of my content is local music. So what's this local song that you know when you said local music what is song that popped up on as you know on your head? Now which local song? Wow, which local song exactly? Ni just say for what we should live my musicians when when at what we please let it be me please let it be me. <laughs> well, one thing about me is um you'll always find e uh, week ni napenda hii song next week uh, napenda hii song ngine the other week i just love this song so i may not have like a specific one song that i love but one thing i normally and i keep saying it i love supporting local talent i uh, yani international music it's good sawa let us listen to nigerian music it's good it's very good let us listen to tanzania music but Let us to also to support you. our own. Let us listen to local music. Najua sasa hii watu wako zile za like ah lakini gospel music eh hai sikiki siku hizi ni nini 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 but there are still people out there who really sing good gospel songs. Maybe I can I can say the the one that um I I'm currently I currently really like because um uh, it's a song that just came out the other day like I said me every week I have like a song I really like a eh, eh. um it's a song called Ebenezer by Moji Guardian and Benachi. I really love the way these guys are really holding on to. You know they're like gospel like kufa. Tunakufa nayo tunai revive. You know everyone is like ah gospel ile kufa. But these guys have really held on to the gospel music to the gospel itself and to the gospel industry. Amen. And they have said I apana tutaishikilia hadi ile siku itaamka and uh, god is doing a revival in the gospel industry each and every upcoming artist that i meet in my show or out here i tell them god is doing something new in the gospel industry it's up to you to choose if you'll be part of it or not yeah right now gospel artists are like secular is the way to go gospel has died and even those who listen to gospel music the audience itself is like gospel has died but i say the gospel of god can never die Amen. it can never die god is just doing something new and let every upcoming artist there or rather every artist who is in the gospel industry out there do not lose hope do not give up god is doing something new be part of it Amen. Yeah, be part of it. I love that. If you're listening to us, God is still doing something new. Because sometimes we get so caught up in the past and that we are unable to see the newness that the Lord is doing. And I believe the Lord is doing something new not just in the gospel space, but also in the whole not just in the not just in music, but also in the whole church space that God is busy, you know, um fixing his church. He's busy making his church the bride that the church ought to be you know and and we just have to align ourselves 
to the purposes of God. And we, we have to wait for the process. It's, it, it may look long, it may look like there's a lot of stagnation, but it may look like things are actually going down. But at the end of the day, it's not actually going down. It is just God who is just shaping and molding, you know, the, the porter in Jeremiah's uh, uh, vision who was just taking time to mold the clay and mold it into a very good pot. That is exactly what God is doing. He's refining us to be like gold. So let us all, even as Christians, well, it's, you do not have to be an artist. Just accept to be used by God in that re refining process. Amen. Accept to be molded. Accept to be molded. Thank you so much. It's been such a joy Thank to you. talk to you, to, to be the one who's asking yeah. the questions this time. Thank you. And again, if you're watching us, uh, I want you to just, uh, just go down there and subscribe and like and just send the word out that there are still people who believe in God, who are successful in what they do and are still holding on to faith. God is in the process of molding us into Christ likeness. God bless you. See you next week. Apani me fika ni wewe. Ai, na shukura ni ukewe. Lazima majirani waelewe. Ai, umefanya ni